What's going on everybody? I hope you're having a wonderful start to your week so far. Welcome back to the channel. We have a very special video today on the house of Zhirzhov. This is going to be a top six from the house that I have personally tried so far. Now, of course, I have not tried everything from the house of Zhirzhov. They have a ton of fragrances. Just a very deep and complex house from Italy. So I know a lot of people from my channel are huge fans of Zhirzhov. Some people aren't so much, but that's just with every fragrance house. Everyone's going to have their different opinions. Um, I've probably tried around 30 to 35 samples from the house in my fragrance journey. And what you see in front of me is just what I have personally chose just to go into my collection, what I like most from the samples. There are a lot of other samples I really liked a lot, such as Naxos, uh, Casamaretti 1888. Quite a few go into that category that just didn't really fit into my collection, so I didn't purchase them. Uh, but go ahead and leave your top five or six down below. There's just so many good ones from the house. It is always interesting to hear people's opinions because nobody is going to have the same, you know, top five or ten, especially from the house of Zhirzhov. You know, they're one of those houses very similar to like Amouage, Bond Number no. 9. They just have such a large portfolio of good fragrances. Everybody has a different opinion. There's not really a, a consensus on the top five or six. So it's always interesting to hear people and what they think of different fragrances. Um, so we'll just go ahead and get started on them. I'll, I'll name some of the notes on the fragrances, but really just kind of let you guys know what I get out of them, what the main vibe from the fragrances are. Uh, of course, you guys can look up the notes for yourself if you're looking to know exactly what is in each fragrance, but we'll just go from left to right. Uh, not going to be really ranked in any particular order because they are all so different. They could all fit into different occasions. Um, not really anything that I would use for a similar situation here on the table. So let's get into it, man. Now Luxor, if you're talking about pairing something with a nice cigar and some good drinks, maybe a fancy night out, you're going to be dressing up. Luxor may be number one, guys. There's just something really polarizing about this fragrance. It's spicy, complex, got a little bit of like a oud wood tobacco thing going on. In fact, I think they have Laotian oud, or Cambodian and Thai oud. I think Laotian oud is in the uh, Alexandria II. But they've got cardamom, leather, cinnamon, cypriol. I mean, this is just an assault on your senses. Some people, it may be too much, it may be too heavy, especially on the first couple sprays, man. But once it settles down into your skin, you really just get a beautiful wood, tobacco, oud. Man, this stuff is just incredible. When I first tried it, it almost had like a little bit of a reminiscent hint of like cherry, like cherry tobacco as well. Like if you ever had some of the uh, cherry pipe tobacco, I used to work at a tobacco store down in Miami and I would actually mix some of the pipe tobaccos. And this does, even though it doesn't have the note of cherry in it, it does remind me slightly, maybe it's just with the cinnamon, cypriol and cardamom and the leather it also has incense as well but maybe those things combined with the tobacco it does give me a little hint of cherry tobacco along of course you got the great wooden oud notes in there man this fragrance i just can't say enough about i really try to save it since they only come in the 50 ml bottles i try to save it for special occasions uh, for that exact reason that i stated before when i am dressing up when i am going out for drinks or cigars or something of that nature uh, Luxor is one of the top fragrances for that, not just in the collection of Zhirzhov, uh, but in my entire collection. Like you look at Royal Tobacco, Triumph of Bacchus, Bodicea the Victorious, um, Kute has their, um, or I'm sorry, Unique and Luxury has Kute, and Bodicea the Victorious has Tobacco Sapphire. You know, all those I kind of try to save in that category of Luxor, so I got some good options there. Uh, but that, if you have not tried it and you're into those types of fragrances, Luxor is something that you got to check out, guys. So another one from the house, maybe one of the most hyped from the house of Zhirzhov besides 40 Knots and Naxos, is Alexandria II or Alexandria II. I believe they have another one uh, that's not quite as popular, the first Alexandria. Guys, this one, for somebody that does not like powdery fragrances, I would say that this is slightly powdery. It's got a really nice apple note to it as well. Rosewood, lavender at the top, uh, different types of Laotian ouds. So one of the best rose oud fragrances you can get your hands on. Of course, everyone's going to have their opinion on what is the best, but this is right up there with them. You know, you got New York oud from Bond Number no. Nine, which is no longer made anymore. There's 
there's just a ton of good ones out there. Heck, you could probably even, even though it's completely different vibes, you could probably put Blue Sapphire from Bodicea the Victorious in there. That's a very heavy uh, rose and oud fragrance, even though the top notes, very different orange and lemon. You don't get a lot of the rose and oud until it dries down. This is a little bit more in the forefront where you really get that powdery rose, apple, cinnamon, lavender. I think there's cinnamon in here. It's got like a nice spice note in there. Woody, the oud comes across, but it's more of a cleaner oud. It's not too, you know, resiny, smoky, or animalic. This stuff is just beautiful. I can see why it gets the hype that it does. It's well-deserved. Um, on my skin, it goes very, very well. In fact, I'm actually wearing that fragrance now. Longevity and performance is beast mode. They are pure perfumes. Now, Luxor, this only comes in a 50 ml. Alexandria the second, it does come in 100 ml. Um, so that's something, depending on how fast I go through this one, I will probably grab 100 ml of it. That's just how much I enjoy it. Beautiful fragrance, guys. It really is. It, it deserves the hype, in my opinion. Is it overhyped? Maybe because some fragrances get so much love, you almost don't even want to buy them because it seems like everyone's wearing them. Uh, but there's not a whole lot of people uh, that are really overhyping Alexandria the second anymore. It was more than when it first was released. Uh, but I really enjoy that fragrance. It fits in my collection very well and it goes great on my skin. So one of my favorites from the house, especially during summertime, guys, uh, there's a lot of good ones from the house of Zhirzhov. You got Torino 21, Ebra Pura, uh, the list just goes on. They do summer fragrances very well, but my personal favorite is 40 Knots, no question. The longevity and projection that you get from this is just insane. It's got some nice white floral and marine notes going on slightly powdery it definitely has some wood notes in there maybe it's like sandalwood and and beech wood they do keep their uh, ingredients in the 40 knots join the club so like the dawn and a couple other ones that are in the join the club series they don't tell you the notes they kind of let you guess but this one you certainly expect some like marina cords some white florals woods probably some musk in there as well it's, it's actually a pretty heavy fragrance for it being fresh in a summertime uh, kind of marine fragrance but it is heavy guys it has huge longevity huge projection they just did a wonderful job with 40 knots it's just so classy smelling it's one of those fragrances to where you're gonna get compliments on it because it is that blue sort of dna but it's also extremely unique and i've always said this about this fragrance you know i've done a lot of cooking i consider myself to be a pretty good cook Learned from one of my buddies who's actually a really high-end chef at a restaurant up in North Florida. And this has a very slight note. If you've ever done a brandy or a cognac reduction to where you're just left with like the brandy or cognac kind of cream sauce, this has a little bit of that in there. Like an Armagnac cognac brandy reduction. It's not boozy or alcoholic. It's what's left over after the alcohol already evaporates. That's in there with kind of those powdery white floral and marine notes and wood notes. Musk, man, I just, I can't say enough good things about this fragrance. There's a reason why it is, you know, up there with Naxos is one of the most popular ones from the house. But if you like those summertime fragrances, those blue fragrances, but you're wanting a more unique twist on it, I could not recommend 40 Knots enough. It is absolutely stunning, guys. Now, as we get into these last three, these are some of the most unique ones from the house, in my opinion. Uh, this one here, Holly Seam from the Kimmy Blue line. Now, the Kimmy line didn't really wow me, but the Kimmy Blue line, which has four fragrances, it's Astaral, Empyrean, Holly Seam, and then Ether. Uh, man, these are just incredible. Super, super high oil concentration. I think Holly Seam's done at 30, and Ether is done at 35% oil concentration. This one is extremely green, guys. It's sage, uh, cade oil, thyme. It's got fir balsam in there. It has patchouli and sandalwood and oud at the base as well. So extremely woody, resiny, green. The dry down is somewhat reminiscent of one of my favorite fragrances, which is Riverside Drive from Bond Number no. 9. I believe that's mainly just because of the patchouli and the sandalwood note in there. My goodness, yeah, if you're looking for a really nice green invigorating fragrance that can be used all year round, I think this would maybe go a little bit better in the high heat because of those top notes with the sage and the, the thyme and the cade oil, fir balsam, 
almost like a little bit of a Christmassy smell. So of course it is strong enough to where you can wear it during cool weather and winter time and maybe around the holidays for that reason. Uh, but for me, this will be getting a lot more use in the high heat, you know, spring or summer situations, just the way that it goes on my skin. It's a beautiful fragrance, as you would expect. Longevity and projection is great. Uh, the development on this one is absolutely killer. Same with ether, uh, but Holocene is much more green and less uh, animalic and oud based than ether. So two completely different fragrances, extremely high quality ingredients. And obviously, as you can tell, just the bottles are amazing on these. So next one, of course, we got ether. Maybe my favorite from the house. You know, it's hard to say because they're all from different situations. But when you look at, you know, oud based animalic fragrances, I love Neiman Lion from Argos, Silver Oud from Amouage, of course. Man. That is really good. Ether, it's got, it's it's kind of a yin and a yang. You know, you look at the top notes and you got lemon, orange, pine, very bright citrus-based kind of opening. And then it goes down to like caramel, oud. Goodness gracious. Yeah, it's very deep and complex. It is slightly animalic, slightly resiny, slightly earthy. It's got musk in the base as well, I believe. And this one is not gonna be for everybody. This one is a little bit more challenging, but if you do like those fragrances that I just mentioned, if you're a fan of Silver Oud, Neiman Lion, some of those types of fragrances, I know uh, Al Seif as well from Bodicea the Victorious, which I just reviewed. That's another one where it's got kind of that animalic, earthy, smoky, you know, you can tell they're using a lot of Oud in those fragrances. And this one, uh, Ether, is no exception. It's one of the favorites from the house for me. And when it goes on skin, it's really interesting because usually some of those base notes are base notes for a reason. You don't smell them until the fragrance develops and dries down. But ether is one of those fragrances to where you kind of smell the animalic oud and musk right away. It's got some sweetness in the base to counteract that. I believe it's got the, the caramel and the patchouli in there as well. Uh, this, this stuff is just fantastic, man. One of my favorites from the house. It's, it's one of those fragrances, again, not gonna be for everybody, but if you're you know a fan of fragrances that go that direction and you've not tried ether, I know one of my subscribers hadn't tried it and he bought it off my recommendation. It's one of his you know favorites from the house as well. He really is enjoying ether. Uh, so it's, it's really good stuff, especially if you're a fan of those types of fragrances. Now, something I bought from a subscriber's recommendation to me, he's been really into the House of Zhirzhov and he told me about Tony Iommi monkey special and he was right man it's it's a little bit sweet but i do i don't mind sweet fragrances as long as it has depth and development and that's not all you get and man the passion fruit the rum oh my goodness that's mainly what you get from this especially in the opening is the passion fruit rum extremely sweet i believe it's got musk and caramel at the base as well Good development on this stuff man it, it just projects it's got great longevity again it's one of those fragrances that's so rich and sweet it almost gives you like tropical vacation vibes almost like something that you could mix into a cocktail this is something if i'm going on vacation even though it's not technically a blue fragrance this is something that i would bring with me especially now they got it in the, the 50 ml bottle and i'll probably be looking for 100 ml of this uh, just depending on how quickly this goes it's something where i have a lot of fragrances in my collection but this is one of those ones i just don't want to be without it really is that good tony iomi monkey special if you don't like sweet fragrances it's probably not going to be for you honestly it's just almost overly sweet again with the passion fruit the rum and the caramel it's it's very very rich thankfully it does develop and those top notes do start to fade away after six hours or so on skin and it's still sweet all the way through. I mean, when you look at the base notes, having caramel in there, that's something that shows up upon the first spray and it's there all the way as it dries down. So the passion fruit and the rum, they kind of go away a little bit and the caramel and the other notes sort of stay around. But man, yeah, for the summertime, vacation, going to the beach, having a cocktail on the beach, something like that, Tony Iommi Monkey Special, is wonderful, would work really well for a date night as well because it is one of those sweet fragrances. It's not gonna be something that's gonna turn somebody off. It's not gonna be something that's too imposing. It's just gonna be very sweet and likable. 
And I think this is something that would definitely go a lot different on a woman's skin than a man's. I don't know if it's gonna smell more sweet on a woman or not, but it's definitely something where those notes, I feel like they're gonna change a lot depending on the type of skin you put it on. So I know that could be said for any perfume, but this one as well, it's definitely one of those fragrances that I think would smell a lot different on a man than a woman. And I just personally love it, guys. So that's it for the House of Jerzov for me so far. There's some other ones that I have on my list that I do wanna purchase, but about the 30 or 35 samples so far that I have tried, these are the six bottles that I have purchased, and there's quite a few more. Uh, the Don from Join the Club series is really one of those as well uh, that has my attention. There's quite a other, you know, few ones from the house that I've got have my attention, but just an extremely deep and quality house. It's hopefully I'll be able to get about 10 by the end of the year, but as you guys know, most of my focus has been on Bodicea the Victorious and Raja Parfumes, and those are pretty expensive, so hopefully I'll be able to get to about 10 of these in full bottles by the end of the year, kind of round out my collection a little bit. Uh, but this is definitely one of those houses that I'll never be done with. I mean, the quality and the intention is there. Beautiful bottles, obviously. You can find them at discounts. Um, Joma Shop has some as well. So it's one of those fragrance companies to where you don't always have to pay retail, but you know you're always getting a quality product. So guys, like and subscribe. Membership helps the channel tremendously, keeping it independent, letting me review more fragrances like this. And please go ahead, leave your top five or six from the house below. It's always interesting to hear other people's opinions, especially from the house of Zhirzhov. With everything they have to offer, everybody's going to have a different five or six list on there. So can't wait to hear from you guys soon, and I'll be back with another video shortly. Bye.